Okay, well, on, on Tuesday we, we analyzed the, the techniques that one can choose to, to prove a theorem that states that there exist at most 55 subgroups of USP4 satisfying the, the, Galois, the, the Sato Tate axioms for an abelian surface. What we will do today is to uh, determine which of these uh, subgroups can actually arise as the satotate group of an abelian surface. And to do this, the key notion will be the Galois type. But first, to understand the Galois type, it will be important to study the connections between the satotate group and the Manfortate group and the algebraic satotate group. And this uh, relation was established by Banashek and Kat Blaya. So let me recall the setting. A will be an abelian variety defined over a number field F. F is always a number field in these talks. Say of dimension G, this abelian variety. And then recall that I denoted by rho A the alavic representation attached to this abelian variety. And on Monday, I define two gr groups attached to this alavic representation. I define GL to be the Zariski closure of its image. And I define GL1 to be the intersection of GL with the symplectic group. OK, let me fix uh, first some, uh, some notation. Tensored with Q, the rational Tate module. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to have these algebraic groups uh, over QL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some notation. It's whenever I have a field extension. L over F, I will denote by AL the base change of A to L, from F to L, and fix an embedding of the field F into C. So this permits me to see this C as a, an extension of F. So I can consider AC, and I will denote by V the first homology group of AC with rational coefficients. And then, whenever I have a Q vector space, for example, V, I will denote by V sub R the tensor product of this Q vector space with R, and analogously by VC the tensor product of this vector space with C. Okay, so what I want to do next is to define some algebraic groups that might be seen as upper bounds for uh, the connected components of this GL and GL1.
So first observe that uh, this vector space, uh, this R vector space VR is endowed with a complex structure. And by this I mean that there exists a homomorphism H from C into the endomorphisms of VR that is obtained by identifying this space VR with the tangent space at the identity of AC. And then I can define what the manfort tate group is. the mumford uh, group that I will denote this way is the smallest algebraic <coughs> subgroup G of uh, GL of V So everything uh, over Q, such that its set of real points contains the image of this homomorphism H. And I want to also define an analog of the Manfort Tate group, the Hodge group, that it, uh, it's an analog that is, is, is killing the homothetes. So the, for the Hodge group, I just take uh, the connected component of the intersection of the Manfort Tate group with SL2G. Okay. And well, there is a theorem of the Lin uh, that says that uh, the connected component of GL is indeed contained in the Mumford Tate group. When I base change to QL, or equivalently, that the connected component of GL1 is contained in the Hodge group. Okay, and in this, uh, in this context, what the Mumford Tate conjecture say, says is that the, the, the previous in a, uh, inclusions are in fact equalities. So observe that the, uh, the, the Mumford Tate group will only give us information about the, 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 the connected component of the Sato Tate group. So what we want to do now is to define upper bounds, uh, sorry, upper bounds not only for the, uh, the connected components of uh, GL and GL1, but for the whole GL and GL1. And 
And okay, since we obtained a satellite group from GL1, and in order to not to introduce to, to too many groups and too many notation, let me just care about GL1. So parallelizing the yes. In a SP, because if I take as so I could take as L, but then I sh I should have the co take the connected component. This uh, with as L I don't get something connected. That's why I take here the connected component. Mm -hmm. So definition. Let's take tau an element of the absolute Galois group, then I define the left shed's component relative to this tau to be the set of elements in the symplectic group that act by conjugation on endomorphisms in the same way as Tau acts on endomorphisms by conjugate, Galois conjugation. Okay, and to make sense of this product, you may see C alpha as an element, or as an endomorphism of. Uh, of V, okay? Uh, any endomorphism of the abelian variety gives us an endomorphism of the homology. And then define the twisted Lefschetz group to be, and I will denote it by TL of A, to be the union of the left shed uh, components relative to tau for every tau. Mm -hmm. And well, there is a, a, an immediate remark. There is an obvious inclusion of GL1 into the twisted left shifts group, base change to QL. Mm -hmm. But uh, the analogy with the previous section stops here because we don't expect this inclusion to be uh, an equality in general. So for example, in uh, dimension four, you have Mumford examples for, uh, which are abelian varieties of dimension four for which the endomorphism ring is trivial. So any uh, symplectic uh, element will be in the twist left group, but uh, they are abelian varieties for which the alladic representation uh, or, or, or for which this GL1 is strictly smaller than SP. But nonetheless, uh, Banashak and uh, Ketlaya state the following conjecture. Which is called the, and they call it the algebraic satellite conjecture. And it says that there exists an algebraic subgroup. They denote by ASTA, the algebraic satellite group of A, such that for every prime, this GL1 might be obtained as the base change 
of the algebraic satellite group of A to QL. So you should see this conjecture as a refinement of uh, the Mumford Tate conjecture in the sense that, uh, that we are also uh, taking care about the group of components. Oh, an algebraic, sub, an algebraic subgroup is of the symplectic group over Q such that uh, we have this equality. And even more, they prove the following. For dimension up to three, the Mumford Tate conjecture and the algebraic Satellite conjecture hold. And well, when proving that the algebraic Satellite conjecture holds, they actually show you which is the algebraic group for which uh, this conjecture is true, and should add that it holds for the choice of algebraic satellite group equal to the twisted left sheds group. Okay. So let me let me explain some consequences of of this theorem. The first, for the first one, I need to, to recall a crucial property of the Hodge group, and it is that the, the subspace of the endomorphisms of V that are fixed by the Hodge group coincides with the endomorphisms of the abelian variety. Okay? Observe that this is telling me, so, so, so of course, this is telling us that, that, that when conjugating by elements of the Hodge group, uh, the endomorphisms uh, remain invariant, remain fixed. But this is telling us that the, that the Hodge group is inside this, uh, the twisted Lefschetz group, in fact, inside the left shift component relative to tau equal to the identity. And since the Hodge group is connected, by definition, this will be inside the connected component of the twisted left shift group. So, What happens if the genus is, uh, if the dimension is at most three? Well, the Mumford Tate conjecture holds, so this tells me that I can obtain GL uh, uh, one, I can obtain the connected component of GL one from the Hodge group, and if the algebraic Satellite conjecture holds with the algebraic Satellite group equal to the twisted Lefschetz group, this tells me that uh, this will give me GL1, and I take connected components. So I will have an equality between the Hodge group and the twisted left shift uh, group connected component. So this gives me an easy way to define the satellite group. Mm. So, recall that the satellite group was uh, defined as a maximal compact subgroup of the base, base change of GL1 uh, to C. 
So uh, now I can define it as a maximal compact subgroup of uh, the base change of the twisted left shift group to C. And in, I can define its connected component as a maximal compact subgroup of the Hodge group They change to C. So this answers a question that arises on Monday. That was, uh, does the satellite group depend on the choice of the prime L and on the choice of the embedding yota of QL into C? Well, in the, uh, up to dimension three, no, because I can obtain it directly from an algebraic group. And this also sheds some light into the, the, the second satotate axiom, that is the existence <laughs> of a hot circle inside the connected component of the satotate group. And this comes from, from the fact that the connected component of the satotate group is uh, related to the Hodge group. And Hodge theory tells us that the Hodge group indeed contains a hot circle. OK, so now we can get into section two. Which is well, the the the, the Mumford Tate group you should see it, uh, re uh, closely related to the Hodge group. It's just killing the homothetis, and the Hodge group is giving you the connected component. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm. well, uh, if I take elliptic curves, it will. Uh, mm. I mean, mm. uh, I. Maybe, 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 yeah, maybe later you will see how, uh, I mean, it, it involves, so it involves uh, doing these uh, computations to determine these. Uh, we, we have, I, I have done this in, for some genus three curves very explicitly, but I mean, you get some big computations that I, I don't remember now. And, uh, Yeah, if the endomorphism ring is just Z, so everything commutes with uh, any symplectic element, so you get the whole symplectic group. If you take an elliptic curve with complex multiplication, you should, uh, you should impose that uh, these uh, elements in this symplectic group commute with this uh, uh, normalizer of, uh, of the hot circle, and, well, it gives you a... It, 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 it's possible to, to compute it in very explicit examples. Just... Uh, mm -hmm. What would be the... Out, the automorphism group. Ah, sorry. In... In the case of an uh, analy, well, it's uh, uh, mm, it's just a symplectic group with CM, uh, without CM, and with CM it's the toru, the algebraic, the two-dimensional algebraic torus attached to the field of uh, uh, to the quadratic imaginary field of the CM. Mm -hmm. Yes, why is this true? Uh, I mean, if you read that like, there's a number of components, sounds to this inclusion, or. Uh, if I can read the. Read the number of components. Sorry. The number. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, the, uh, so this will definitely come later. It's, uh, you can, the, the, the group of components of GL1 and of the twisted left shift group are isomorphic. And in fact, are isomorphic, uh, so this, uh, they are also isomorphic to the group of components of the Sato Tate group. This I will state explicitly later because I will really need this. Okay, in fact, very soon. So, section two is properly the, the Galois type. So for this, take G a finite group. And E a finite dimensional re real algebra equipped with an action of G. Okay, and whenever I have pairs of two such objects, GE and GE prime, G prime E prime, I will say that they are uh, equivalent or, or they lie in the same uh, class if there exists an isomorphism between uh, G and G prime and an equivariant isomorphism between E and E prime. And by this I mean that this isomorphism preserves uh, the action of G uh, of G prime. And then I can define the Galois type. So first, let k over f be the minimal extension over which all the endomorphisms of the abelian variety A are defined. Or more precisely, the minimal extension such that the endomorphisms the base change of A to K are already all the endomorphisms of the base change of A to Q bar. And then the Galois type of A is defined to be the isomorphism class of the following pair. For the group, I take the Galois group of K over F. And for the real algebra, I take the endomorphisms of AK tensored with R. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is to see what, which Galois types do we get for dimension one. Well, uh, I, ca I have the case of an elliptic curve without complex multiplication. So in this case, the endomorphisms are Z, they are all defined over F. So the extension is trivial. And if I tensor the endomorphisms with R, I get R. I have a second case of an elliptic curve with CM defined over the ground field. So by, by definition then, this extension is trivial, so I get one. 
But now the, the endomorphisms tensored with Q are a quadratic imaginary field tensored with R are just C. And finally, I have another case of an elliptic curve with CM, but not defined over F. And so again, by definition, this uh, extension now will be quadratic. So I will have Z mod 2, Z, and the real endomorphism algebra is again uh, C. So this looks really nice because this is the same uh, cases that we had uh, for the satotate groups in genus one. So it's, uh, it's a question, how is this Galois type related to the satotate group for higher dimensions? And then you have the following theorem. Theorem one, for G, up to three, the satotate group determines the Galois type. And okay, let's prove this. The first piece of information uh, given by the work of Banashek and Ketlaya. And it's, uh, it's very related to the previous question, what are the uh, group, what is the group of connected components of the satotate group? Well, they show that this is isomorphic to the group of connected components of the algebraic satotate group. So in other words, tensoring with C and taking maximal compact subgroups does not affect the group of components. But recall that up to dimension three, we have that this algebraic satotate group is the twisted Lefschetz group. And I define here the Lewis the Lefschetz group as an infinite union of Lefschetz components. But now that we know what, what K is, we could write it as a, as a finite union of uh, Lefschetz components, in fact, indexed by those taus that belong to the Galois group of K over F. So this, you show that is the Galois group of K over F. Mm -hmm. So, let me uh, look again at this uh, important property of the Hodge group. I might decide to tensor it with C. So, what do I get? I get that the endomorphisms of A, K, tensored with C are isomorphic to the endomorphisms of V tensored with C. And now, instead of fixing by the Hodge group, I might decide to fix by a maximal compact subgroup of the Hodge group, which is the connected component of the Satotate group. And here, of course, I still have an action of the whole Satotate group an action which by definition factors by the connected uh, component. But this group is isomorphic to the Galois group of K over F. So I can recover the action of this Galois group from the action of this group on this space. So this is uh, very nice, but we, here we still have tensor with C, and we, go, we want to go down tensor with R. So how do we recover the real endomorphism algebra? Well, by means of the Rosati form. So let me recall you what this is. So we will take a polarization
of A, and so that's an isogeny from A to its dual, and we can uh, define by means of it the Rosati involution. It's uh, a map from the C algebra of endomorphisms into itself that sends an, enzo an endomorphism psi to uh, the dual of psi conjugated by phi and phi to the minus one. Okay? I will denote this psi prime. Then you have what the Rosati form is. And it just defined as the map that sends uh, an endomorphism psi to the trace of the composition of psi with psi prime. And to make sense of this trace, you may want to see this psi as an endomorphism of V. Hmm? So how do we recover the real endomorphism algebra? Well, it is well known that it is the unique real subspace of the complex endomorphism algebra of half the dimension <coughs> over which the Rosati form is positive definite. Very good. And the best of this proof is, the, is that you can make it completely explicit. And this is what I'm going to do now. So I need a big blackboard now. So making the proof explicit. So recall what the possible connected components of a Sato Tate group. At the end, we will remember all of them. We might decide to compute the fixed subspace of M4 of C by this connected component, and then the subspace over which this Rosati form is positive definite. And then let's do, let's do one case and let's do this case because this is the crucial case. And if you do this, you get uh, C cross C. How do you get C cross C? Let's do the computation.
So, in this case, we have that the connected component is U1 cross U1. And we have to embed it in USP4 in a way that it contains a hot circle with the, with the right uh, eigenvalues. One possible way to do this is to send UV to the matrix uh, uh, U, U var, V, V var. So observe that today I'm taking uh, the matrix S for the symplectic form respect to which this USP is defined to be a 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Different from the one I took on Tuesday. And well, what is the the subspace fixed by this uh, connected component? Well, the matrices commuting with this kind of matrices <coughs> must be the diagonal. This is good. So this is giving me what the complex endomorphism algebra is. But now I want to see what is the, the, the fix, the, the subspace over which the Rosati form is positive definite. So let me call uh, this uh, psi uh, a general endomorphism and let's apply the definition. This is by definition just the trace of psi, psi prime. And this is the trace of psi. And now I need to uh, use uh, phi minus one, which, what is the polarization, but observe that uh, symplectic form S is giving me the polarization. So, I need to put the inverse of S here. I need to put here the dual of Psi, so the transpose of Psi, but it's diagonal, so it's just Psi. And I have to put the matrix of Psi, of, uh, sorry, of uh, Phi, which is S. And what is this? Well, let me do this product. The inverse of S is minus S. So what I will get is the trace of uh, minus a, b, minus c, d. If I do this product, if I do this product, I obtain uh, the opposite. So a minus b, c minus d. And the trace of this, oh, OK, it's the trace of the product, which is a, b, a, b, c, d, c, d. Yeah, uh, so this is for genus two, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well no, I, I assume it's a, a polarization given by this S. But it's not principle that the polarization can be given by a matrix like this. There is no principle to be like... Uh, I mean, so what the, the symplectic form is, uh, is, is giving you a... Uh, an isogeny between A and its dual, automatically. This is principal? Mm. Okay, but, uh, well, in this case, you, you must have it, given by this symplectic form. Mm -hmm. But you go to USP4 because it's somehow up to a math it is. It, the, the Laddick representation preserves the, the veil pairing.
So what's this trace? This trace is uh, 2 times AB plus CD. And there is a much better way to write this if you want to check when this is positive definite. This is just 1 half of A plus B squared minus A minus B squared plus C plus D squared minus C minus D squared. OK, and if you want this to be positive definite, well, A and B, they'd better have uh, opposite imaginary parts. And A and B, they'd better have the same real part. And because of the symmetry between A and B and C and D, I get here the same. So if I want to see what the real endomorphism algebra is, which is uh, this uh, real subspace over which the Rosati form is positive definite, what I will get are matrices of this form. where R, S, U, and V are real. And of course, this is isomorphic to C cross C, so what I had said. And you could decide to complete in exactly the same way this table. And then what you get is this. And let me add another column to the table. So this is going to give me the real endomorphism algebra. But we know what the Q algebra of endomorphisms is for abelian surfaces. So uh, to use notation, let me denote by K1 and K2 quadratic imaginary fields. In this case, what I get is M2 of a quadratic imaginary field. In this case, you can have M2, either M, M2 of Q or a uh, non-split indefinite quaternion algebra. In this case, you can have either the product of two quadratic imaginary fields or a quartic CM field. In this case, you must have the product of Q and a quadratic imaginary field. In this case, you can have two cases. You can have the product of Q and Q or a real quadratic field. And here you get Q. So how do you obtain this? So this uh, follows from Albert's classification of division algebras with an involution. And in fact, a little bit more. Because uh, Albert's classification, if I remember well, a a allows a, a quadratic imaginary field alone. And this was ruled out by Shimura. So it's the, it's the sum of the two of them. But observe that as a, as a byproduct of our computation, we get that this result of Shimura that a quadratic imaginary field cannot arise because uh, 
we did that in obtain C on this uh, column. Mm -hmm. So, and okay, still have time to tell you how is the decomposition of A up to isogeny, the splitting of A. Well, in this case, it's the square of an elliptic curve with CM. In this case, it's the square, in this first case, it's the square of an elliptic curve without CM. And in this case, it's simple. It's a, a non-split quaternion algebra. And observe that this is telling us that it must be indefinite. Because when I tensor with R, I get M2 of R. It must be automatically in the indefinite. Well, in this case, I get the product of two elliptic curves, both with CM, by non-isomorphic fields, so that they are non-isogenous. Here I get something simple with CM by a, a quartic CM field. Here I get the product of two elliptic curves, E1 uh, without CM, <coughs> E2 with CM. And here again I have the case of that the abelian surface splits as a product of two elliptic curves without CM and non-isogenous. And I get the case where the abelian surface is simple. And here, of course, it's the abelian uh, surface must be simple. So observe that this tensoring with R has this effect of uh, that makes that the property of being simple or not is not so relevant in terms of satellite distributions. When you say it's a product of two elliptic curves, that means that it's a product of two elliptic curves and extension. No, it's just two cases. There are, there are two cases, so yeah, 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 yeah. So here, everything that I'm doing is over uh, the, 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 the extension over which all the endomorphisms are defined. So this splitting is over Q bar, if you want. So, okay, and you could do this not only for the connected uh, groups, but for all 55 groups. And then you get 55 candidates of Galois types. And then let me state uh, theorem two, <laughs> the final theorem that says that there are exactly fifty two Galois types of a billion surfaces. Defined over a number field exactly thirty four of which can arise and do arise if the ground field F is Q. So let me give a sketch of the proof of this. Now we have all tools. So the first step is to do this explicit computation for all 55 candidate satellite groups. And if you do it, you get 55 distinct candidates Galois types. 
And this adjective is very important because it permits me to make the following remark. You can complete theorem one with the following. What did theorem one uh, say? Um, for G up to three, the satotate group determines the Galois type. You can add, conversely, for G up to two, the Galois type determines the satotate group. And we did not know at all this a priori, but as long as these 55 sat candidate satotate groups give you 55 distinct Galois types, you can go the other way around. And of course, we did this uh, in genus one, in the example we see it, but we have no idea, uh, oh, oh, for genus up to two, we have no idea of what happens in genus three because among these thousand groups that there are, we, we haven't done the computation of the Galois types. So it might happen that two give the same Galois type. How does the proof continue? Second, we find 52 abelian surfaces for 52 of the 55 candidate satotate groups. So 52 uh, arise for sure. And the third step is what happens with the three unrealized candidate Galois types. Mm. Well, uh, they correspond to the case in which the connected component is U1 cross U1. So that's why I said that that case is the crucial one. So this is to say to the case in which the complex endomorphism algebra is C cross C. And then you do a direct computation of Galois types for this case. And then you get that only five can arise. To comment, so remember here we had eight groups. Hmm? We re only five can be, the three remaining unmatched groups can do not give uh, the satellite group of an abelian surface. And to do this, you need to use the work of Shimura uh, describing what the algebra of endomorphism is for an, and, and its properties for an abelian uh, surface with uh, CM by a quartic CM field. So we recover some of the properties of Shimura, but some are necessary to rule out these three groups. And so, yeah, I stop here. Yeah, Drew? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it wouldn't be difficult to describe these five uh, Galois types that arise in this case. You, you, you consider that two, these two cases, it's something we could do in, in half an hour. You consider these two cases and then you write the lattices of uh, subreal algebras of uh, C cross C that are fixed by these groups. On the one on on the on one hand and on the other hand, you just uh, look at the product of two elliptic curves with CM. Uh, what what are the cases? When is the CM of one contained in the ground field and the CM of the other one not contained? The case in which both C, uh, CM fields are contained on the ground field. The case in which no none of the uh, CM fields is contained in the ground field, etc. This case is in fact not no problem. The, 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 the case in which you use the work of Shimura is in this case. A case in which the abelian surface is simple and has CM by this aquatic CM field. And it's an extra structure that uh, it was impossible to axiomatize in the, ac in the Satote axioms. What kind? Uh, so it's, it's, so w in this simple case, you have two cases. The, this quartic CM field could be Galois, and then it, it's, uh, its Galois group is a cyclic group of four elements, or it could be non-Galois. And then the Galois closure is a dihedral group of eight elements. And then Shimura shows that um, this field K, over which all endomorphisms are defined, is the composition of the ground field F and the reflex field uh, of this CM field. This is the CM field. And so this tells you that at most this K can be an extension of degree four of F. And one of these uh, candidate Galois types was already uh, 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 corresponding to an extension of degree eight. So that's how you rule out this one. And of course, yeah, the the, this field K for the product of two elliptic curves with CM can never be a degree eight extension. It will be at most two times two. <laughs>